Let's unbox and take a quick look at the newly released Apple Airport Extreme. What's going on guys? My name is Tomas and in this video I'm going to unbox and conduct a quick performance overview of this new Apple Airport Extreme. It is packaged well and was it made it to my house just fine without defect or any kind of damages. This router is a complete redesign from the traditional Airport Extreme or time capsule you're used to. Then the packaging falls in line with Apple's design campaign as we take a quick look around the box. Let's peel off the plastic and dig in. Top of the box slides off as it opens from the bottom and as you can see it the unit is standing tall within. You get a power cable and some documentation at the base of the box. Unfortunately, we don't get any Apple stickers. Uh, personally, I think we should get at least one because of the, how much this thing costs. At the top of the unit, you'll see a pressed Apple logo, which is an odd addition to this redesign. As in previous editions, the logo has traditionally been polished in or etched into the unit itself. The top of the router has a matte finish to it, uh, while the body has a is glossy white and, and attracts uh, quite a few fingerprints. Uh, there is shipping plastic surrounding it. In addition, you'll find some more at the bottom uh, that needs to be taken off as well. The bottom of the unit is also a matte finish. Uh, you can see this uh, when we peel off the shipping plastic. It stands 6.6 .6 inches or 168 millimeters tall. Uh, has a square width of 3.85 inches or 98 millimeters and weighs in at about 2 pounds. All of the unit's I.O. runs vertically along the rear of the unit itself. Now that we've taken a quick preview of the new Extreme, let's compare it to the older design. It is significantly different in form factor and design. The new Extreme seems to have taken key from the soon to come Mac Pro. Looking at the two units from the top, you would think the 802.11 AC is smaller. But when you lay the unit on one of its sides, you see the length of the unit almost matches the width of the 4th gen Extreme. The I.O. is identical between the two units, as you are provided one WAN, one USB, and three LAN inputs, as well as a recessed reset button. The only two major differences between the two units are the power supply is within the 802.11 AC unit, and the older model Extreme has the Kensington lock option. As we take a closer look at the differences between the two form factors, you'll notice how the 4th gen Extreme is almost as wide as the 802.11 AC is tall. Okay, now the fun begins. So why would you want to upgrade if you already have an older model Airport Extreme besides the offer Apple makes of 802.11 AC, uh, essentially future-proofing your router? I decided to run a quick performance overview test of the two units using a Hitachi Z7K500 single platter SATA 6 magnetic hard drive connected through a USB 3.0, even though the two routers only offer USB 2. I didn't want any bottlenecks to occur on the side of the hardware which was attached to each of the routers. First up, the 4th Gen Extreme. I am testing inter-network file transfer times using a 500 megabyte DMG. I wanted to test how long it would take the transfer to happen as testing internet speed is completely dependent on your internet service provider and wouldn't make sense here. I want, as I am sure is the case with you, to see the actual performance difference between the two routers. I am testing file transfer speeds on both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz channels on each of the routers. In addition, after mounting the network drive, I conduct a Blackmagic disk speed test to get an idea of how fast data is actually being transferred. So. With that, you can see it took 414 to transfer 500 megabytes of data on the 2.4 gigahertz channel to the network drive attached to the fourth generation Extreme. Uh, let's proceed with the testing by opening Blackmagic Disk Speed Test and get an idea of how fast data transfers over the 2.4 channel. Uh, it looks like we're maxing out at around two megabytes write and four megabytes read. That may seem terrible, but we have to take into account all the other devices in the home are drawing from the 2.4 gigahertz channel. Uh, let's switch to the five gigahertz channel to see if there is any difference here is a surprise, since most of the devices in my home don't draw from the 5 GHz channel, the file transfer completes in significantly less time, clocking in it at 35 seconds. Following the same testing routine as last time, Blackmagic is reporting around 10 MB write and around 11 MB read. Okay, now I hope to validate my purchase of this new Airport Extreme. Uh, let's repeat the same sequence of testing as we just completed with the 4th generation unit. We're going to see greatly improved file transfer speeds on the 2.4 GHz channel versus the 4th gen. 
Um, this is probably because, and this is just my speculation, the six antenna within the unit are uh, the reason behind the difference. There is roughly 70% give or take improvement from the older version of the extreme. Through the process of simple division and network reliability, I came up with this improvement percentage in my head. This is because the 500 megabyte test file is completely transferred to the network drive in a little over a minute when it took the older version almost four and a half minutes. Now on to black magic. Uh, the 2.4 gigahertz channel is now writing and reading on par with the older version's 5 gigahertz channel, um, clocking in at about 7 megabytes with uh, spikes into the 9 megabyte range for writes and 11 megs read. And finally, I'll run the same sequence on the 5 gigahertz channel. The transfer time is roughly the same as the older version, but we will see significantly higher disk writes and reads from the Blackmagic portion. All in all, if you're in the market for a new router and want to keep all your home electronics in Apple's ecosystem, then this may be the option for you. In the end, you'll have to make that decision based on your needs. I opted to future-proof my router as 802.11ac is going to be the new norm. Thanks for taking the time to watch my video. I hope it helped you in your decision. If you're in the market for a new router, uh, feel free to check out some of my other videos. Thanks again. Have a great day.